Hello everyone, welcome or welcome back to my channel. My name is Dylan Nellis and I make college app videos to help you get into your dream schools. In this video, we're gonna be talking about how to research colleges. Researching colleges is really, really important and you need to do so for a variety of reasons throughout the college application process. First, you need to do your research when you are building your college list. This should usually happen at the end of your junior year or throughout the summer before senior year or maybe even the fall of senior year, but that's a little close because your applications are due that time. So if it's the fall and you're still building your college list, let's try to speed things up. The second time you're going to need to research colleges and probably the most important part is when you are crafting a why us essay. So the college application process has a lot of different essays that they ask for, but one of them that many schools ask for, not all of them, is a why us essay, which is saying, why do you want to go to our school? The essay prompt may not be those exact words, but something along those lines. And then the third time you'll really need to research colleges is after you've gotten accepted into your schools and you need to figure out where do I actually want to go? Because then the research is not only about classes, programs, teachers, all that stuff, but also about the actual vibe of the school, the community of the school, the environment, the dorm life, the student life, the transportation, the surrounding city, all of those factors that are really important. I also do have a video on how to choose the right school for you if you are interested in checking that one out. Now, I just wanna take a second and talk about the why us essay a little bit more and why researching for that is so, so vital. The why us essay is a really difficult essay to write successfully. And that's because it has its own set of strategies that you should be using. And a lot of students instead fall into these cliche phrases and their essay ends up sounding very, very general. So general that anything they say could be applied to any school anywhere and be said by any student anywhere. And we don't want that. We want your essay to be super, super specific to the school and super, super specific to you and your values and your experiences. So the college admissions officer will easily be able to say, okay, this is exactly how you and the school will fit together because ultimately you need to convey that you have the potential to succeed at their school and you would be able to offer value to them as much as they are able to offer value to you. In those YS essays, you need to mention really, really, really specific, I know I say that word a lot, but really specific opportunities at that school. And I don't just mean saying, oh, renowned professors or excellent computer science program. No, because most schools have those things. So now I'm gonna share a bunch of questions that I think you should be asking yourself when going through this process so you know what kinds of things to research for. The bottom line is you're gonna have to dig really deep into the internet. So who is a specific professor that you want to learn from or work with? What have they already accomplished? What lab are they working in? What books have they written? What research papers have they published? And if you are interested in that line of research, maybe you want to actually read that professor's published work. So that way in your YS essay, you can say that you did that and therefore show the college admissions officers that you did your research, you really care about this school and therefore you demonstrate interest. Okay, what else? What about the program makes it so special? Do they offer a unique teaching style? Do they have a unique emphasis? Or is there something about their facility that makes it really special? What clubs does this school have that you want to get involved in? Or what study abroad opportunities or internship opportunities do they have and they offer that most schools don't? Or even if it is an opportunity or club or whatever that is common amongst other schools, Try to dig even deeper and get even more specific and figure out maybe things that they do differently or ways that you would contribute to make it an even better experience. Because once again, colleges want to see what value you can add to them as well. And if you can share actual ideas of like, oh yes, I would love to participate in this very specific activity, doing this very specific thing, or maybe there's an organization that you're already tied with and you can make connections with that organization and this organization. Or maybe you have fundraising ideas, or maybe you have an app idea and you wanna create it in this studio or in this workshop that they have. Also, what weird or wacky traditions does this school have that you would love to participate in? What are unique qualities about their architecture or their landscape or environment? Or what context can you pull from the history of that college? What's a random fact that most students won't know about and therefore most students won't write about in their college essays, but can help you stand out as an applicant? Questions like these are endless, I could ask them all day. 
So the point is you need to find all those hidden gems so that you can shine in your application. So in just a bit in this video, I'm going to be going over several examples of how to like go through a college's website and find certain things. But first I wanna mention where you can find some of those weirder, wackier facts about a college. Student newspapers is a great place to find these things. I go to Stanford University and we have something called the Stanford Daily, where students will write a lot of different articles about a lot of different things. They do reporting on university news, student opinions, arts and culture, sports, and the school culture. It was actually through one of the Stanford Daily articles that I learned about this thing called Gaieties, which is an annual performance put on by Stanford students. It's an entirely student-run and student-written musical about the rivalry between Stanford and Berkeley, and it's really fun, and I participated in it in my freshman year because I had done this research. It was also cool because I actually mentioned this in my interview as something I wanted to do once I was at that school. Another place you can look is random internet forums or YouTube. You know, a lot of students these days are posting their day in the life at this university. And I think that's a great way for incoming students or prospective students to actually get a sense of what the vibe is like at that school. You can see what very specific events those students are going to or classes that they're going to or resources that they're utilizing. So then you can say, oh, that's really cool. I actually want to do that. And I'm gonna write about that in my YS essay. Lastly, this one is Stanford specific, but there was an Instagram account that was recently created called Stanford Secrets. I'm not affiliated with it at all, but I just came across it and it's stanford.secrets. And they share so many weird random facts about Stanford that I never knew before. So I know that Stanford's application doesn't exactly have a why us essay, but they do ask a very short 50 word question called like one thing that you look forward to experiencing while at Stanford. And just throwing that out there, if you want some whacked out thing to mention in there, you can check out that Instagram account. Now, if you wanna get more of the general information for each school because you're building your school list, I know, sorry, I've been talking so much about the why us essay. If you're here building your school list, this video is still for you very much so as well. So there are websites like niche.com or niche.com, however you pronounce that. I personally like to say niche, but I don't know. That website is a great search engine where you can find the stats, the demographics, the graduation rate, and actual reviews from students who go to that school. So it gives you like their entire profile, which is really helpful. Another really, really great search engine that I use is the College Board's College Search. And so I will link it right here and show you guys what it looks like. You can also just filter your preferences for what kind of school you're looking for, you know, four year, two year, big, small, how rigorous, all those things. And then it will give you search results. This can definitely help with the college search. And I highly, highly recommend doing that rather than just only applying to the schools that you've heard about before. Because most of us have only heard about, oh, the top schools and whatever, but the top schools are getting increasingly and increasingly difficult to get into. Not saying that you shouldn't apply. If you think you should apply, definitely go for it. But there are so many other schools that could offer you just as great of an education and they actually need and want students just like you. So it's important to apply to those schools as well. And these search engines can help you find those. Okay, now for my live demo, I'm gonna walk you through three examples of going through a college's website and finding their classes or finding research opportunities or finding the application info for an arts program, for example. The first one we're gonna go over is Columbia University with a major in economics. The second one we're gonna go over is USC with a major in biophysics. And the third one we're gonna go over is UCLA with a major in design media arts. Design Media Arts is a program that I actually applied for and got into and a lot of students have been asking me about it and asking about like how do I find the application info and I'm going to teach you how to find the application info because it's actually not that difficult you just have to do some digging on their website. But the application info is really really important because they actually require you to create certain art pieces just for their program and write certain things just for their program as well. Alright, let's get started. Okay, excuse my nose right here, but I'm working on this monitor right here. Um, the first thing I'm going to do is look up on Google, majors at Columbia University. You see, I've already typed this. <laughs> Just click on majors, concentrations, other programs of study. Oh look, at college.columbia.edu. Perfect, and here it gives you all of the majors, absolutely all of the majors that they offer. 
Okay, cool. So I'm going to click on economics. Oh, look at this. I, from here, can learn so much. I can click on faculty and it gives me all of the professors. And then if I wanted to do even more research on these people, I could probably look up their names and put Columbia University at the end so I know it's those professors. And then I can read up on their bios and what they've accomplished. But right now I'm gonna click on requirements. Oh, so you can see all these requirements. And so there's core courses, there's mathematics. Um, so you know like how much of the courses you need to take. You can learn about the subsets of the economics department like economics, mathematics, and like, oh, look, all of those courses there. You can click on courses as well. Um, economics. Oh, look at that. Look at these. It gives you so much information about the course. And something to note here is not just, oh, cool, it's a course, is read the description. See what I just highlighted? That is the course description. And these are really important because they can actually help you craft what you're going to say in your YS essay. Because these descriptions are gonna say what they want you to get out of that class. And in your essay, you need to say what you want to get out of that class. What you wanna learn from that class, what skills you wanna gain, and how you would contribute. But of course, anything that you research, you cannot plagiarize. Do not ever write the exact wording that was said in a college's website because that's a huge red flag. So another thing you definitely want to do is go to the actual program or major's website. So their website is usually completely different than the main college's website and it has way more information on there. So I see that is listed right here, their website. So I'm going to open this in a new tab and check that out. And by the way, if they didn't list that on there, I could have just Googled like economics at Columbia University, and then that link would be in the Google search results. All right, see this website looks different um, than the other one, but we can click on undergraduate because that's what we're interested in. There's, ooh, yeah, application and admissions about the program, opportunities and like research and career opportunities, course offerings. So I'm just gonna click on about the program for right now and let's see what comes up. Ooh, look at that. It's a whole description about the program. And so you can read this and figure out, is this what's interesting to me? Does this match my interests? And if so, hallelujah. I'm now gonna click on opportunities to see what's on that page. Ooh, so here we have research opportunities for current students. And wow, look at this. It gives you some classes where you can actually get research credit and what you have to do to get that, how to find a position, lots of great information here. Okay, full-time research opportunities for graduates. Um, maybe you're not a graduate if you're watching my videos, maybe you are, um, but here's info on that as well. Now I'm gonna click on career opportunities. Oh wow, that's a lot. Oh cool, so if I was interested, maybe I could watch this video on a career in economics and maybe mention something about that in my YS essay or I can learn about the Center for Career Education and that links to another site so I can open that site up and dive even further into the career here. And there's jobs and internships, which I can just like scroll through, learn about the jobs, on-campus recruiting, um, internships, ooh, these alumni mentorship program or a Columbia College Summer Funding Program. That sounds awesome. Engineering Internship Fund, like, whoa, maybe these are opportunities that you want to take part in. So here you go. You can just click on these and learn more about them. So now I'm back here. I'm going to click on application and admission because maybe I should learn about that. Here's all the contact information for undergraduate admissions if you're interested in contacting them. I can also click on student information and learn more about the resources for their students. Or look at this, the Columbia Economic Society um, organizes events to connect students with economists, professors, and professionals from banking, finance, and consulting related fields. That sounds awesome. If you are interested in any of that, then I could go and click on this and then I can check out this society. And oh, look, past events. I can read up on the things that they have done and then I can mention those events in my actual essay. I could even, if I'm feeling bold, go onto the executive board where look, they have the emails of the people who are actually on the board of this club. And perhaps I could email one of the students there and ask them about the program and learn a little bit more information. It is so great to not only do your research online on the internet, but actually reach out to current students so that you can get even more information that most students won't know because they only read the website.
Okay, now let's look at majors at USC because we're gonna move on and check out biophysics at USC. So cool, list of majors, undergraduate education. So I don't see the list here, but I see right here it lists, it links to a list of all undergraduate majors. So I'll click on this online catalog and there everything is very similar to Columbia. A lot of schools have the same thing. I'm going to click on biophysics, the courses that are required. I can click on them and then once again, read up on the description, which is very important. I can also learn about prerequisites or courses that I need to take before I'm able to take this course so I can click on that and then that'll give me that description for that course. Okay and like I said before now you want to go onto the actual programs course page. Now it doesn't look like it is linked here. Um, it's possible I'm missing it. You know what? That's fine. We have Google. So we're gonna Google biophysics at USC. And there we go. It takes us to dornseif.usc.edu, which is the College of Letters, Arts, and Sciences. So here we have biophysics. This is their program page and it gives you a sample program so you can understand what types of classes you'll be taking over the course of all four years. Oh, and let me check out research. Look, there's a lot listed here. So I'm gonna click on biological physics and you can learn about all of these different research opportunities. So this one's experimental biophysics and it gives you the very specific labs that are working on this very specific thing. So if any of this was of interest to me and I actually wanted to work in those labs, in my YS essay, I would actually mention the Chung lab, for example, and talk about what kind of work I would be doing there. You can scroll down, learn about their current research topics. Oh, and there's even more theoretical biological physics, computational physics. It just, there's plenty of things to look at here. So if I wanted to then go onto the labs page, then I could open this in a new tab and check out the lab. So then I can maybe go to news and learn about some of the things that they are doing and accomplishing, which is really awesome. I can click on research and once again, learn about what kind of work that they're doing at this very specific lab. Because once again, the more specific you can get in your essays, the better. And of course, it just gives you a better understanding of what you're actually signing up for. I can click on publications and ooh, look at this. These are actual publications that have been done. I can, no, I can't click on them. Okay, that's fine. Well, maybe I could then copy this, paste it into Google. Maybe you can find these on Google. I'm not entirely sure, but there's always more and more digging that you could do in the internet if you find interest in some of these things. So now I'm back on the USC Dornsife page and I'm gonna click on undergraduate. And let's see, what about undergraduate student orgs? This is interesting. Society of Physics students. Okay, I'm gonna click on this and ooh, maybe if you're interested in physics, you wanna join this. Like everything, you can click on all their events, their resources, their board, you can contact them. Memes, oh, that's fun. Oh, look at this, they have memes. That means they appreciate humor. So back on this page, I'm gonna go under people and click on faculty because maybe I wanna learn more about these faculty. And look at all these people, Coolio, it gives their contact information also. So I'm just gonna click on someone random and then you can read upon their professional history and all of the things that they have done, their research, their research interests, also their publications, like I was mentioning earlier. So if you wanted to mention how you want to learn from a very specific professor, you need to be able to talk about the things that they have done and what specific things that you wanna learn about because you know that they work in this field. Okay, lastly, we're gonna check out UCLA. So first, like before, I'm going to go to UCLA majors or majors at UCLA, same thing, great. So I'm gonna click on this and it looks like it gives me a bunch of different majors. You can also jump to different schools within UCLA, like the School of Arts and Architecture. Um, so I can click on this and oh look, it is what I'm looking for, Design Media Arts. So let's click on this and see what we get. Here it gives us, once again, a description of the major and the requirements. So you can check out the general catalog the Design Media Arts Department website, which I say to always check out, their School of Arts and Architecture website, 
contact information for the people who work there. Okay, so I'm gonna click on, let's see what happens in the general catalog. Okay, so this is interesting. It just gives me some basic information. Their learning outcomes, which is really important, and you can reference that when you're writing your YS essay, the kinds of courses you need to take. But okay, I'm gonna go back and go to their department website because that's gonna have a lot more. Here is the department website, looks completely different. This is gonna have a lot more information here. It talks about their curriculum. Now from their department website, I can learn about the actual Actual work that the students do here. So under gallery, under undergrad and gallery, I can click on that and see, oh wow, look at all of these awesome arts projects that their students have been doing. So I'm just going to click on one of them and show you guys. This is a really cool installation and it explains about the project and how they made it. This is really awesome. Look at that, all this stuff. She's actually soldering and presenting it in front of other people. So you can just look at a lot of these different types of projects and see like, is this the kind of work that you want to be doing as well? And obviously this stuff ranges. I mean, here's a fish and here's an app and here's some cards and here's a notebook, like very different types of work here. Um, so definitely check that out. And then I want to know more about the application process because this is what a lot of students come to me asking for. I'm going to click back on DMA. I'm assuming, yeah, that'll take me to the homepage. And then I'm going to go under undergrad. I'm going to click apply. So then when I click apply, it gives a lot of information on undergraduate admissions and how do I apply, who can apply, and transfer students, and change of major, all of that information. But if I want the actual document that's going to give me the requirements of everything I need to do and all the pieces and artworks that I need to create for this major, then here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to look on the right and I see, oh, important documents and I can click on DMA Supplemental Application. So if I click on this, it's gonna take me to this PDF, which I highly recommend saving. This is for Fall 2021. Make sure that it's for the year that you're applying for because fun story, something that I did was I looked at the wrong year and then I ended up actually creating an art piece that I didn't have to create. And so then I had to create a whole new piece for the updated year, but it doesn't matter. I ended up really liking that piece anyways. So here it's going to explain everything about what you need to do. It's going to talk about you know, the fee of the application. Um, this is the supplemental application, by the way, this is in addition to the regular UC PIQs, like that whole UC application. And so if I scroll down, here we go, questionnaire. So these are survey questions that you're gonna have to answer, academic history you're gonna have to answer, extracurricular activities you're gonna have to list on there, your unofficial transcripts in PDF format, influences, this is interesting. I don't remember that being on my application in my year, but in 500 characters or less, you need to list your top five creative influences. You also need a portfolio, which I was mentioning. So the first one is a self-portrait. Um, and you can see what themes that they're centered around. So this one's about like your identity and diversity. So make sure you like really read into that. Make sure you're creating a piece that is actually what they're looking for. You can also do a multimedia file limited to 10 seconds in length. Every year they have you do a word project. So you create a project based on one word and the word changes every year. So this word is halt. And then you also have to explain in a hundred words or less just describing your piece and how it relates to the theme. And then you need another set of works, which is just unique works of five to eight images of your own portfolio. And it tells you especially what they're looking for. So that is really important. I'm just gonna say that for all art portfolios everywhere, if you're doing an art portfolio, look at what specific things they're looking for because the type of art and the style of art that certain colleges want varies. And so for UCLA, you can obviously learn about what they're looking for on their application and on their website. And then they lastly have additional work, which is optional. You can submit even more stuff if you wanted. Yeah, so this, this whole document is super handy dandy and you just need to know how to find it. All right, so that was how to do college research. I hope that provided a lot more clarity so you understand what I mean when I say dig into the internet. It's literally just 
Google searching things and clicking around and finding links after links after links after links. If you are interested in getting your essay reviewed by me or my team of editors, which I'm starting this year, I'm super excited about, you can check out collegeessayadvice.com. Also at this link is my ultimate guide to craft your story online college essay course, which is super, super helpful and guides you through the entire college essay writing process from start to finish. It even is going to have a component for the YS essay, which I've been mentioning over and over in this whole video. But this course goes so much more in depth about how to do the research, what to look for, and how to write notes while doing your research and turning those notes into the actual structure for your YS essay. So I highly recommend checking that out. All of these resources can be found at collegeessayadvice.com. All right, that is it for today. I will see you in the next video. Bye-bye.